and how the educational system in Nigeria. I had tears in my eyes and I told myself I was going to do this. Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm super excited to have you join me here. My name is Noye and I'm a Nigerian teacher. I live and work in Lagos, Nigeria. If it's your first time here, let me be the first to say welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're a returning subscriber, I'm super excited to have you join me again. Thank you so much for your love and for your support. And you all have made this happen. Thank you so much. I do not take this for granted. It's very well appreciated. So it's my first story time i'm excited to be doing this and i'd like you to please sit with me grab yourself a pack of popcorn and maybe a glass of water no a bottle of water would be fine because i think it's an interesting story even if i say so myself the reason i'm asking you to do this with me is because i can tell that some nigerians can relate with the story that i'm about to share it's how i became a teacher in nigeria please as you watch this video do me a favor hit on the like button you know what you're doing you're making more people watch this content by hitting on that like button it's not going to cost you anything and if forgot if you forgot to smash on the subscribe button it's right there stepping at you please make that subscribe button move from red to gray please it's free absolutely free okay so welcome to my channel <music> this way a lot of people have asked me this question about how you became a teacher why you went into teaching what inspired you what motivated you what propelled you what pushed you why are you in teaching and see how passionate you are with the way you speak and with the way you express yourself so why teaching you could have gone into something different why teaching in nigeria for crying out loud there should be something behind it there should be a story that you may want to share with us there may be a story that you would want to tell and that's why i'm doing this video i want to share a particular story that i want you all to please listen attentively to especially if you can relate to this story so once upon a thousand i gained admission as a teenager into the college of education technical Akoka, federal college of education technical it's in akoka lagos and then i got the admission to study computer mathematics education so i chose that course and there were about six of us in that department if i remember very clearly first okay and it's a three year course so I, I was expected to graduate 2001 2002 okay so my set left in 2002 99 2000 set 2001 2002 set so then we're expected to do two teaching practices right and teaching practice had the highest grade point average and you needed if you make an A it was going to boost your scores and all of that so I made up my mind that I was going to make an A because it was going to boost my score in school so I was posted to a secondary school in Lagos State and this secondary school is an only boys secondary school and it was a public school so when I got in there I was asked to teach mathematics because I studied computer mathematics as at that time they didn't have computer science in that particular school but they of course had mathematics and the mathematics teacher was worried about me because then I was <laughs> then I was in a body of a child in the secondary school my frame I look like a, like somebody in the secondary school remember that I gained admission as a teenager okay but then I transitioned into age 20 going to 21 when I was asked to go and begin my teaching practice okay so when I got in there I looked like a secondary school student to them and a lot of them were worried by my size and they didn't want to hand me over to people who look like my mate to go and teach and besides they were only boys and so they thought that because they were only boys I may not be able to handle them but then that was not my problem my problem was to come in deliver my content and then get my scores that was what was paramount to me and then ensure that I impact these boys and girls so on the day I was supposed to begin my class my teacher the teacher that I was supposed to work with in other words I was coming in as a as a TP student as a teaching practice student so the teacher that I was teaching that class took me into the first class that I was going to teach and then as soon as I walked into that class the whole class had this and then the only way he had to calm them down something that he had in his hand two on each hand and then he banged it against the wall twice and the entire class became quiet as soon as i walked into that class and i saw those boys my heart skipped a bit why there were about 150 boys let me say that one more time there were about 150 boys in one class 
how was I going to teach 150 boys when my heart began to race and I was going to be assessed remember I was going to be graded guys <laughs> I was very nervous and then thick sweat covered me up and then I smiled under that sweat knowing fully well that I needed to go back to the drawing board to analyze and strategize it was very important for me at this point so the teacher turned and looked in my direction I said don't worry these boys you will handle them this is what they understand he was referring to the king he had in his hand and he said hey this game you're going to be needing it and I looked at him and said I would not take this game because this is not what is important to me right about now so I was supposed to take two arms right 150 children in A class and then 160 something children in B class I can't remember exactly but there were more than 150 in the second arm of the class I was supposed to take these two classes and my supervisors were going to supervise me in any of these classes so when I went back into my hostel I met some of my friends and I told, told them my first experience they had a good life for them what was their problem most of them as at that then didn't even want to teach they got into school because there was no other option so they found themselves in school and some of them they found themselves in the college of education because they didn't pass the drama some of them were way older than me some were already in their 30s so they came in out of frustration they didn't really want to teach so whatever score they got in teaching it didn't matter to them so but for me it mattered to me because i needed my good grades so when i left talking with them i decided to go back to my room to have a moment with myself to begin to think about what to do to, with this boys when i go back to them so the next day was my time to try my first experiment with this was with all of the knowledge that i had gathered while in the college of education so when i was there i walked into the class classroom of course as, as expected there were a lot of disorganization here and there was a public school of course a hundred and fifty boys some sitting by the window some on the floor some everywhere scattered all over the place and i knew i needed to organize these boys create an eye so that i can move around them before i begin to give the instruction and the instruction at that time was not important to me because I knew that some of them were our house health, children of orphans, some of them were children of widows, some of them just needed to be in school just to get out of home. So the instruction at that time was not important to me but first of all getting the class organized. So we started organizing the class and as soon as I walked in they were making noise and talking but then I would walk into a particular child, whisper to the child, they would not want to know what I say to the child. The child would give me a response and go to the another child and then another child and then another child before i knew it i found out that they started to calm down and then i started to talk to them using story time so i began with stories i began to organize the class i began to arrange the class i began to put them in group i said i decided to put some of them to sit together and before you knew it the entire class became organized when I started my instructions, I could, instead of giving 20 sums, I would give 5 so that I can at least, first of all, gather these children before I began to teach them. That moment was a moment of decision for me. I knew I had to start teaching to make a difference. I knew I had to start working in, I knew I had to start teaching because I knew the teaching was going to make a whole lot of difference. Now, let me cut this story very short. My supervisor came in and my supervisor came in on a particular day and she was shocked, perplexed, flabbergasted and confused at the same time at how I was able to manage 150 children in one class. I was able to give them the instruction, mark their, mark their work, give them their feedback right in the class and the entire class was that work. And she looked at me and she said, I beg you for one thing. Regardless of what you finally do when you leave this place, please make sure that you do not leave this profession. Be a part of those who would make a difference in this profession. Can you do that for me? I'm not saying that you should not make your decisions in doing whatever you want to do, but please don't be far away from this profession. And that brought tears to my eyes. Because considering how Nigeria and how teaching is in Nigeria and how the educational system is in Nigeria, I had tears in my eyes and I told myself I was going to do this. Guys, that was how my journey started into teaching and learning have i been frustrated oh yes have i reached the point where i wanted to give up oh yes so many times have i been pushed the wall? oh come on have i met irate parents come on have i met grumpy parents fantastic have i met grumpy parents have i met administrators that were annoying oh yes it was the time i wanted to quit oh many times but when i remember this supervisor and the words she said to me I told myself I was going to stay in this profession to make a difference even if I leave 
the classroom tomorrow, I'm not going to be far from teaching and learning. That's if I leave the classroom. I'm still not going to be far from teaching and learning. So for those of you who have asked me questions on how, why, how and why you became so passionate about teaching and learning, this is my story. And every now and then, I get feedback from these students that I've taught once upon a time. Some of them are in, in the university now, some of them are out, some of them have found themselves in different places, but I still get feedback from these children. And that gives me a whole lot of joy every time I need, to, I get a feedback from them. And that is my story of how I started teaching and learning. I hope this has answered questions about five different questions so this has answered five different questions of what drives me into teaching what prepares me about teaching why did i go to teaching why am i so passionate about it i'm sure this has answered your question and if you like this content please give this video a thumb up if you've not subscribed yet at this point please what exactly are you waiting for be kind and smash on that subscribe button click on the notification bell and if you're in nigeria and you can relate to a story like this and you understand and if you've been in an overpopulated classroom let me know in the comment section let me know what your thoughts are and let me know what your opinions are what do you think about the educational system in nigeria what would you like to see change in nigeria on that note thank you so much guys for watching i'm happy that you stayed with me to this point until i see you in another video stay blessed be kind and do the right thing bye for now if you're new to my channel click on the subscribe button tap on the notification bell like it comment and share thank you